Blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor? A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God? That is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been yet revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he is revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteousness. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? Things you often don't hear in an Episcopal church. Those questions. Um, I want today to really focus on that witnessing part and, and say um, we need to reclaim it. <laughs> if you notice at the end of today's gospel, Jesus does not end with, would you consider being witnesses? In the future, will you be witnesses? No, he says, you are witnesses to these things. You are witnesses to these things. That is our identity. To be witnesses. That is what I want to suggest today. Fundamentally, who we are supposed to be. It is who God needs us to be. The reading from Acts, which precedes the gospel, but actually chronologically comes after, attests to this as well. Early on, Peter is saying, early Christians, as a result of the open tomb, as a result of their realization of being Easter people began to proclaim in word and deed. We are those Easter people. And we are called to witness to the risen Christ. And there may be some discomfort in that for us. Um, there may be the thought, you know, that's for someone else to do, not me. Like, I don't, maybe, like, I don't have the language, I don't have the words, um, that's not my calling. And what I want to suggest today, that 
is that by nature of being Christians, that is our calling. To, to be witnesses to the risen Christ in the world. Uh, because we do that, whether we say anything or not. I want to also suggest that through our silence, through our turning away um, from certain issues or things that we are actually witnessing. We witness in not doing things. Um, you know, I hear those people say, I don't, like, I, don't have, like, I don't have faith, I don't believe in anything. Yeah, you do. Everyone believes in something. Everyone has faith in something. Um, it might be, I put my faith in money. Or I put my faith in power. But we all, we all put our faith in something. And um, our, ult, our, our, ident our fundamental identity as people who recognize the resurrection of Christ is to be Easter people and to proclaim that. Because I think that's what the world needs. You know, I was, um, I was an undergrad, an economics major. So, and, and my job after I graduated was for a consulting firm. And basically, I did marketing. I know a thing or two about marketing. That sounds a lot like an ad you might have seen on TV. Farmer's insurance, am I right? We know a thing or two about, here's the thing, here's what I've heard about marketing, really, really good marketing, and this will probably resonate with all of us today. Really, really good marketing is like a virus that just spreads, that just kind of takes off and it just kind of creeps into your mind and you just recognize certain brands or certain products. And you might think about those slogans over the years that, um, that kind of represent that idea that became very popular and that certain products became known for. Like everyone knew about this. In the Catechism, in our Book of Common Prayer, where it talks about ministry, it says our primary ministry as Christians, as Episcopalians, is to represent Christ and his church. And to, to be a witness, to be a witness to Christ in all that we do. At home, at work, at the grocery store, at a bar, with friends. Represent Christ and the church. Be a witness to Christ. What does that mean for us? What does that look like for us? Now I'm going to put my economics major hat back on for a second and say I'm actually all about marketing. I believe in marketing. And you know what? We're going to do some things and I'm going to suggest some things that's going to look a whole lot like marketing. Because I believe more people need to hear about this church and what this church represents and what this church stands for. But ultimately, y'all, that's not what it's all about for me. Ultimately, it's about Drawing people to a place that I believe has something really significant and special to offer. And how do we do that? How do you do that? Because you know what? You're the primary ministers. Not me. You're ministers wherever you are. 
And whatever you do, so what could you do? I don't know. Ask someone. Ask a friend. Want to go to church? Like, invite someone to church. Yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know if I'm standing right here right now if someone didn't invite me to an Episcopal church. She's sitting right over here. We're married now. She liked me in high school, and I liked her. But she invited me to church. First time in an Episcopal church. Now, I happen to think that we would still have, like, be together. But my point, she invited me to church, y'all. You can do that. Or, or invite someone, hey, you know what? Like, we broadcast. Yo, we got a podcast going now. Well, marketing? Yeah. But it's way more than that. But you could say, hey, you don't want to go to church? Like, just check, it, check us out. Check us out online. Listen to this. You know? Or, hey, we've got these activities going on. Now we're just going to hang out Thursday, y'all. You know? Have a drink, whatever you want, snack, whatever, and talk. Doing church. <laughs> Just not at the church. But you could invite. You could invite. Welcome people when they're here. And here's the other thing. Just be a good person. <laughs> Just live into it. And how you talk to someone. And how you're with someone. That's representing Christ in the world. So I think the, the fundamental question probably shouldn't be how do we get more people to come through the doors of St. George's Episcopal Church and sit here amongst. I don't, I don't really think that's the fundamental question. I think the fundamental question is how can we become so caught up in the love of Christ, in the work of God's kingdom, that we are living, breathing examples of grace in the world? That's what I think we're fundamentally called to do. There's a story from Judaism that I really like. It's about this rabbi who asked his students, said, how do you know when, um, when the night is, is fading away and the morning has dawned? How can you tell that that's happened? And one student says, it's when you look through the dim light and you see an animal and you can tell if it's a dog or a sheep. And the rabbi says, no. And then another one of his students says, Rabbi, it's when you can, you can look through that dim light and you see a tree and you can tell if that tree is, um, is a fig or an olive. And the rabbi says, no. The rabbi says, you can tell it's morning. You can tell the night has passed when you look at every man or woman and you discern that you are, you are looking at a brother or sister. Until you look at everyone that way with that clarity it is still night the world needs us turn on the news look around the world needs us to witness. The world needs us 
to be those people who say, the light's actually come. The light is here. And we see the light, and we embrace the light, and we will share the light in all that we do and all that we say. And we will transform this world. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Spirit, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken in the past. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. Remembering Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, Don, and Paul, our bishops, and Kirk, our priest, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, remembering especially Joe, our president, Brian, our governor, and Hunt, Chris, Mary Owen, Jared, Ryan, Justin, Holden, and Jeff, our soldiers. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, remembering Anne, Amanda, Doug, Philip, Annika, Angela, Beth, Pat, Mary, Sonny, Deb, Mike, Beth, Christopher, Brooke, James, Karsten, Drew, Mimi, Craig, Nancy, Jill, Beth, Rick, Christina, Jan, Mimi, 
Bill, Cindy, Ashlyn, Sarah, Lise, Cherry, Alan, Anita, Melanie, Belinda, Reggie, Mark, Diane, Lori, Lee, Sonia, Glenn, Yvonne, Natalie, Lauren, Nancy, Mark, Peggy, Ivan, Claudio, and Megan. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, remembering especially Shirley Lerner. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, offering our prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, remembering especially Patricia, L, Renee, Sonny, and April, and those celebrating anniversaries this week, remembering especially Paige and Graham. of your people in the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help for you are gracious O lover of souls and to you we give glory Father Son and Holy Spirit now and forever Amen. the peace of the Lord be always with you